Guys, Coach Pete here. It's a sunny, cool Monday here on Long Island, and boy, did I get burned since I last saw you. I attended two spring training games for the Mets in sunny Port St. Lucie, Florida this past weekend, and my neck, face, and half of each arm are extremely burned in traditional farmer's tan style. Happy days. Today I want to discuss what self-sabotage has to do with permanent weight loss. For some reason, most people look at needing to lose weight as a pure physical thing. Eat less, exercise more. Simple. Not only is that thought process on the physical steps needed absolutely wrong, but there's an even more important component that will hold you back. Your mind. If losing weight was simple, cut and dry, and strictly physical, we'd all be rocking around with six packs. Unfortunately, as we all know, this isn't the case, and it's because of the mental components associated with it. Now, many of the foods that have contributed to why you've had to seek me out for whatever the reason are physically addicting. Sugar and grains not only put weight on via the insulin resistance cycle, but they stimulate higher dopamine release in our brains than illegal narcotics like heroin. That's why during happy occasions and celebrations, we turn to sugary confections. It helps to elevate our moods and make the moment that much sweeter, both literally and figuratively. The problem is, this grainy, sugary food is becoming increasingly available. Just in my neighborhood, I have a grocery store, convenience store, pharmacy, and even restaurants that readily serve less than stellar food options less than a block away from where I live. I don't blame them since they're looking to monetize their businesses, but we need to wake up and realize that continually turning to quick, easy fixes is not the solution. I had a conversation with a client yesterday. She had been on track all week nutritionally and is preparing to run in a race within the next couple of months, so she has a good reason to focus on her nutrition for that period of time. Saturday morning, she got up to go for a run and on her route passed a 7-Eleven. She stopped running, picked up a couple of donuts, returned home, and bummed on the couch all day eating junk and watching Netflix. Mind you, she texted me after the fact and asked me verbatim, why am I self-sabotaging myself like this? I was so good all week, and I have a race coming up, so I should be as motivated as ever. I won't go into specifics about what her reasons were, but I will tell you that there's a common theme associated with getting complacent and falling off the wagon on a regular basis. Ready for what that is? We're often afraid to feel that we've surpassed the people we're closest to in our lives. Well, what do I mean by that? For starters, you are the sum of the five people you are closest to. That's a fact. If the five people you're closest to are overweight, eat pure and utter garbage, and have no desire to move, then you're going to have a hard time doing all the things you need to do to reach your health and weight loss goals. The people you're closest to can be a spouse, a significant other, a parent, a friend, a child, anybody you interact with on a regular basis who you care a lot about and whose opinion you value. Sometimes, these people will knowingly give you crap about staying the course. Ah, come on, live a little, they'll say. It's just one drink. It's just one slice. It's just one donut. They may not be intending to, but these folks are actually feeling threatened by your progress and their lack thereof, and they're subconsciously trying to sabotage your weight loss efforts. It's basic human instinct if you think about it. Let's say the people closest to you are friends and siblings. They're all engaged, and they're all about to get married. You're the black sheep who's single and has no desire to go down that path anytime soon. While you may not outwardly state how annoying their constant blabbering about being engaged and planning their weddings is, you subconsciously start asking yourself questions like, why are they settling down and not me? Is there something wrong with me? Blah, blah, blah. Obviously, while I'm not a relationship expert, this is just an example to state my point. While we may be happy these folks are making positive changes in their lives, because we don't feel our ducks are in a row on that subject, we freak out, whether consciously or unconsciously. Here's a simple two-step process on how to overcome self-sabotage while on your health and weight loss journey. Step one, identify the trigger. Who or what is coming to mind when you break from your discipline and you eat garbage? What has been done or said to make you feel like you can't continue to better yourself in spite of them? Step two, nip it in the bud. 
If you go out with your friends on a Friday night and they're pressuring you to eat or drink pure garbage, nicely ask them to stop pressuring you. Tell them you're looking to lose weight and make some healthy changes and that now is not a good time to entice you with wings, beer, or whatever. If they're true friends, they'll respect your request. If it's a significant other, they should have enough respect for you to keep the crap away from you while you're trying to be good. Permanent weight loss is more than just the physical. Get your mind in order, eliminate your triggers, and thrive. Until tomorrow. How can I help you? Is there a topic you'd like me to cover in a future video? Perhaps a course or a product that you can use as a reference point? Let me know by simply leaving a comment below. Thanks.